Whether it's Spolstra's playbook or sticking to a fundamentally sound approach defensively, here's why the Heat are not for the untrained eye. A horn-strong playset has Butler acting as the one spaced out in the far corner, Love plus Vincent set a staggered screen, and it's the second pin from Love which allows Struess to spring free, Bam swings it to him with a bullet from the top of the key. Sometimes execution in basketball requires advanced motion like that, other times you just need basic pick and roll creation, as Gabe Vincent exemplifies on consecutive possessions. This spaced out horn's ghost action entails the three and Struess will fake the screen on the right side of the one in Vincent before deep cutting to the left corner. Jimmy's point guard chops were evident in game two as he dropped nine dimes in this one. You saw the horn's ghost, but this less advanced ghost pop action between he and Struess is branched out on the far right, with this time Struess pop into the opposite corner. This time Spo runs floppy, as Lowry's already in position on the left wing acting as the three, Martin collapses the defense with a strong drive entry, and spots Kyle who gets the clean look. Butler gets some lean barbecue chicken on the weak side, with KCP caught on an island in the post, a KG triple threat is followed by an elusive entry and spin to the opposite side for the bunny. Jokic gets Jimmy to pick up the dribble on the low block right here. Butler responds by staying patient in terms of how he pivots in multiple directions to get Jokic out of position before falling back for the Jordan-esque fade. A chin playset entails while Butler and Adebayo run the pick and roll, the one in Vincent baseline cuts, which in this case gets him the kick out from Jimmy. Here we have another horns action called horns option, with Bam acting as the 4, Love acting as the 5, and Struess acting as the 1. The 2 in Vincent is meant to find Bam to give him the option to hand it off to the 3 in Jimmy, or look for the back door. Instead, Love's open on the pop, and Murray's late to recover. On this spaced out weak side high pick and roll, Adebayo's screen and Butler's patience to wait for it to make full contact puts Gordon on Jimmy's back, a Smitty dribble gets Gordon off balance and the eyes of all five Nugget defenders, then Butler collapses that pressure by driving baseline, where he notices Vincent is wide open. Spo goes back to the chin action with a pick and roll happening while Struess baseline cuts to the left corner. That's ultimately a decoy in this case, as it's Bam receiving it on the low block and floating it home. Butler's got the rookie Brown on him in the left corner. He's gonna drive into his jab step to his offhand, stop on a dime, and pivot out towards the right corner. But while that happens, credit Zeller for dive cutting because he finds himself wide open after Jokic helps off him. Zeller's again involved right here, where his more than impactful big body on KCP completely frees up Lowry. With Jokic too far in drop, Kyle has the wide open pull up available. All 10 of Duncan Robinson's points came at the start of the 4th quarter, where he first gets Jamal to fly by before 1-2 stepping into a 25-footer. Vincent sends Duncan the swing pass to the left corner, and Murray this time bites on the all-in-one catch and slight drab step, opening up the lane for Robinson to attack to his off-hand before rising up for the lay-in. Isolating Jeff Green, watch the elusiveness and footwork on this hezzy dribble, and instead of a 1-2 step 3-pointer, he hops into this triple, catching Green off guard to get him just enough room to let it fly. Delay keeps seal action, but without the 1 and 2 running the normal action in this playset and instead spaced out, is run consecutive possessions in a row, with Bam firstly finding the screener in Vincent, who pops to the left wing, and Bam on the next possession, then finding Robinson with the bounce entry for the lefty finish in traffic. While Spolstra's team has mastered his playbook, down the stretch, Miami would live off making the proper reads, scoring in isos or pick and rolls, and generally trusting the next pass, like they've executed throughout this entire historically special run. Defensively, Spo would call out ESPN's Ramona Shelburne for having a quote-unquote untrained eye. Final question on the left. Hey coach, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Uh, this is probably oversimplifying things, but sometimes when, when teams play against Jokic, you, you turn him into a scorer, you turn him into a passer, and he controls the game. You, he only had four assists tonight. Yeah, that, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, it's just, that's the untrained eye that, that says something like that. This guy's an incredible player. You know, twice in two seasons, he's been the best player on this planet. You can't just say, 
oh, make him a score. <laughs> That's not how they play. They, they have so many different actions that just get you compromised. Uh, we have to focus on what we do. Um, you know, we try to do things the hard way, um, and he requires you to do many things the hard way. Um, and we, he has our full respect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Coach. Miami neither made Jokic a passer or a scorer, as that type of black and white thinking is what oftentimes gets coaches killed in the playoffs. You can see on this opening drive that Miami's non-Jokic defenders aren't totally pressed up on the men they're guarding. They don't overhelp, but they at least make the lane the slightest bit more clogged. Adebayo plays off Joker the slightest bit in this pick and pop, baiting him into the release before shuffling over for a contest at the arc. Bam continues that same bait and recover tactic, as here he's initially attached to the Porter screen, but lurches onto Jokic essentially right as he catches it to force the errant drive. Let's not pretend like Joker didn't drop 40 in this one, but whether it was help around the basket or closeouts with intent, the two-time MVP had to work for everything he got. In transition, Notice how Butler doesn't commit to fully doubling until Jokic goes up into his attempt. It turns out to be a pump fake, and that allows Jokic to find Murray on the kickout, but it's not like Murray's more sure of it being a pump fake than Butler is, which can at times throw off a shooter. After getting the smaller Butler onto him out of this pistol cross action, Love and Adebayo immediately converge, working to triple team Jokic and force the miss around the bucket. This handoff from Murray to Jokic at the back end of the shot clock sees Adebayo use swift footwork to anticipate both the perimeter attempt and drive, and an angled hand up stance while backpedaling diagonally allows Bam to block Jokic at the top of the restricted area. You're most likely never going to completely neutralize Joker but this Spolster strategy to neither commit to stopping his individual buckets or his patented dime droppings could be some of the most soundly attentive defensive scheming that we've seen from any team on Jokic throughout his four years of competing in the postseason. That's weird to say considering how well Nikola's performed, so this also displays how special the Serbian really is. Despite the more than adequate Miami game planning, this man Joker is still posting 34 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 assists per game on a shooting split of 60-42-85. Nevertheless, the Heat's balanced defensive strategy to neither double too hard or press up too firmly on the four others surrounding Jokic is the correct approach. If you enjoyed that breakdown and want to see more, first of all, leave a like on this video for the YouTube algorithm. Help the channel reach 100k by subscribing, as we're very close to reaching that mark. And let's be friends. Follow at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. This was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.